let's rewind. Um, clearly, you know, we've had our past, but I also believe in that specific situation. It's like, you were in my life at a very different time. Like, for instance, different, like... Uh, different people. In, in, very in much that, so, yeah. very much so. I mean, at that point, I had just started in Hollywood. Yeah. I was going through the whole mother situation, like at the at the peak of it, yeah, yeah. at the peak of it, to where mm -hmm. my life was in shambles. Yeah. <laughs> what I will say about Lamont and I, in every discussion I've ever had about my past, you know, dates or whatever, I've always said the only one, the only situation I've ever been in that I felt like it was just timing was with Lamont. I felt like we both were in a time in our lives where the world was heavy. And we were both trying to navigate not only our personal lives, but where we were together. You know what I mean? I think now I'm very much like, this is who I am, this is what I need. And I think what has changed now is that now people be like, well, I can't get that to you. And I'm like, okay. great. Okay, now we know off the bat. Right, Which, all right, go about your business. I, I asked you that and I said that because I'm speaking in that in retrospect with knowledge because in at that time and honestly up until the last like two or three years I don't know if it's old if it's age if it's wisdom but I need to tell people what I need I can't require something of you that I haven't spoken out loud mm -hmm. that's very true I'm gonna speak uh, the spirit of reconciliation and then I also speak oh yes oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I speak into the space, um, the spirit of transparency and like everything you just shared, I have felt like a hundred thousand percent. But the reality is it's like we also have to communicate and be like, no, this is this is frustrating me and this is why. And it's hard to communicate that because it's like, well, I'm doing everything. Like, why can't you take the cues that I'm giving? People can't read our minds in that way. Correct. And so as Correct. the as the go-getter driven people that make moves happen, I often feel like, no, we actually have to overly communicate. Uh, there are two sides to it for me. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, on one end, it's like, I don't want you to be a mind reader. So I get it. You should say it. But I also don't want to be your teacher. Woo! And I'm there with you. I on have experienced a lot of that in the past, mm -hmm. especially around me being HIV positive. Mm. I'm tired of educating when there are so many resources for you. And as someone who travels this country and teaches kids so many things, I understand yeah. the, the power in teaching my own community things. But when it comes to being in relationships, I, I do not also want to be your teacher. I did this. Yes, there are going to be times where I tell you to do something, but there are also times I just need you to have some social cues and understand <laughs> what's not clicking, right? Like, if I huff, because you doing something, right. I needed to click to you that whatever you doing, I might be just over there just like right. a little bit upset about. You know what I'm saying? Like there are just some times. I know Kaylin truly understands this. Like we are working with no roadmap as creatives, as people going into this industry. I don't know what's next. And I don't know how I have to react to what's next, which means I don't know how I have to react to you with what's next. And because I'm also learning myself and how this life navigates, you gotta kind of figure it out with me, which means there gonna be times where I don't know either, right. right? And I think a lot of times, like you said, people be expecting that you got it all together so you know the answer to everything, right. or you know a lot of it. It's like, no, I don't. I don't so have some grace with me too, you know, within it's also that. okay to say, I don't know, I'm not sure what I need in this moment, in this space. You would think that. Yes. But you should feel if you're, if you're <laughs> you would, acknowledging somebody that we are we have an attraction mm -hmm. and I'm willing to take I'm willing to see if we could develop something. I think that you have to be open to say in this aspect of my life I don't know. I just wish that was always good enough. Yeah, I, I get what it, you're saying because I, from I think our it's side, also the, yeah, the layer of it, 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 it it's it's, a, it's tough. It's tough, and it's <sighs> there is levels to the whole public figure yeah. of it all. Mm -hmm. The lives that we live are so drastically different than yeah. the everyday life that it sometimes feels like almost like a foreign language. I remember like specifically one time there was somebody and I got stuck for a picture and I turned around and he was gone. And I was like, anything could have happened to me. Why did you leave? Especially when you're talking about like men and egos and pride. It's like, 
Everybody wants to be a star or everybody wants to be seen. And if they feel like you're being seen more than them, then there's a then there's a threat. And it's like I get to stand that like, yes, it would if it was so simple to just be like, this is what's going on. This is what, what it is. Then great. But this is such a world that people are so distant from. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so different from like like you perform on Broadway, yeah. right? People don't understand that you got shows every single day. Eight it's like you week. need to be able we to rest. I don't go. I don't go. I don't be outside. Right. And people can't understand <laughs> that. You know what I mean? After the show. Right. Yeah. After people don't understand that I'm on a plane every two weeks. Yeah. You know, they don't understand what that's like. Because I always tell people, especially when it comes to dating, the only time that I feel lonely is after I've d accomplished something. Or I've done something. Yes. After, yes. after, yes. after I've yes. spent 12 hours yes. on set, sometimes yes. I'm like, damn, I wish I could go home and lay up under somebody. I feel super lonely after major announcements come out. Yeah. I feel, when I hit the New York Times bestseller list, I celebrate it by myself. Yeah. Like, Everything's by yourself. It is, it is true. Because, because those moments happen, you don't time them. So you can't just corral everybody together for nothing. So you typically are most lonely in those moments. Yes, friendships are, are crucial, and, yes. and you do have the community, but sometimes it's like, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not you know what I mean? Right. And I think it's also because when you do live such a grand life, you miss out on the simple stuff. You don't get to enjoy or even take part in the simple things. Baby showers, cookouts. Or even if you do go to those things, you're, the, you're, the you're doing the meet and greet, yeah, you know what I mean? Spectacle. Communicating that to a partner to be like, no, I can't be in this space acting like that, or I can't do that because people are looking at me and that's a reflection of me and everybody everybody can pull out their phone and now it's here, now it's on the internet, this and the other. You know, there's just so many layers and intricacies that make it so difficult and almost feel unattainable. You know what I mean? I, would, I mean, it's interesting to me, I hear all these profound truths and I often think about like, but it didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And so a love that we desire can't happen overnight. Amen to that too. And so the the time that it's taken is gonna take the time that it takes. And building and kind of seeding that into a relationship is gonna have its ups and downs. That partner, that individual may not always meet where you want them to meet. Right. And then and you vice might versa. Yeah, vice right. versa. And so and so in those shortcomings. Like we kind of have to use those moments to like build and to grow. We don't go further apart. We actually have to connect deeper. I'm a, an open person, but a private person at the same time. Yes, me too. And so like my relationship, I mean, you know, I'll be outside, but yeah, I try it. to, um, but I try not to conflate it because I've in my in the back of my mind, oh, these are distractions. But the person I love is not a distraction. Right, they're the fist in the fight along with what I'm trying to do. And my sisters, my black trans sisters, they have taught me that we have to have relationship equity. And the equity in that like, we're bringing the same amount or if not more to the table. I feel like oftentimes people are quick to just fall into a routine where it's like, oh, oh, they got it. That comfort is like, to me, dangerous. Yeah. Because actually, no, like we have to actively be working and building more, supporting more, and that equity can't be compromised. Yeah. Because then you begin to feel like, okay, are you with me because I'm me? Or are you right. with me because like, I'm gonna start my Amex. Okay. And so, and, and, and like, I've been in relationships where someone had my Amex. Uh, whatever. But no, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you love these things. Now you know I'm better. Be like, no, no, but, but, you know, but it's like, oh no, like, oh, like this is a trust thing. Yeah, this is, a, you know, yeah. or like you need this. Yeah. Obviously, that was a shortcoming. Yeah. But the reality is, it's like, but I want to be in a space where, no, like, if you need something, absolutely. But I can also lean on you as well. Right. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, both parties have to want to be able to do the work, and I think a lot of times, one specifically, the gays. They love to just be in a relationship for the picture. You know what I mean? Like, it's all just an aesthetic to be like, yeah, first thing you do, week into the relationship, you already on Instagram, showing the world. You know, that it's almost like a show and tell kind of thing, but you don't want to actually do the work to make the relationship sustain and maintain. Or also, you start dating somebody, but you realize that you actually don't want to be with them. And for me, there was a long period of my life where I felt that I was undesirable that I felt like I was never going to be able to fit into the mode that gay men wanted me to be in order to be seen as attractive. And what I realized over time that that wasn't the case, first, I was choosing men that reminded me of my trauma. 
Mm. and reminded me of the holes that I already had. And because that's what I knew love to be, then that's what I was choosing mm. because that felt comfortable. But it, it was also me realizing that actually you not loving me has nothing to do with me. It's the fact that you didn't want me to begin with, but you saw this as easy. You saw this as convenient. It has nothing to do with me. It was your own selfish needs at that time in your life. And that's okay, you know? I'm gonna let you have that. And if I have to wait for eternity, I would rather wait for a love that makes me feel complete yeah. than settle for a love that brings me more pain and turmoil. But it's also just an, a part of my life that sometimes I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that would feel like. Absolutely, jo look, I don't even think you have to qualify or the, like, I, it, you deserve that. Yeah. But I think like having a, a, someone in your life that gets you and that does complete the things that you might not be able to. Right. And, and that there might not even be the vocabulary for it at this moment, but when we're together, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it makes sense to us. I mean, it's yeah. even something that I've noticed recently that I've been doing is like unconsciously like holding a pillow, you know? Or taking the other pillow. I ain't unconsciously doing it, but... Uh, you know, but like taking the pillow <laughs> and, and holding yeah. it yeah. as I sleep, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and I didn't think about this until like a couple days ago that I was like, why do I do that? I've never done that before, you know? But it's because, like, and I'll be very honest about this, since I done lived in New York, I think there's two men that have been in my bed. You know what I mean? And that's the reality of it, you know? What is great about it, though, um... You better sleep. Oh, child. But for me, it's like, I am proud of the fact that I am so complete with yes. myself and yeah. so strong yeah. that I don't accept the bare minimum just to be held at night. And nobody yeah. should. Right. Nobody should. Correct. That is the thing that I yeah. think that as we share our experiences with love, we realize that I don't have to accept less than what I'm worth. And you should right. feel that you are worth not the bare minimum. Yes, More absolutely. than the bare minimum. Absolutely. Child, I want to love like, what's uh, Noah and Wade? <laughs> Trey see, and Alec. But I see, wanted, like growing up, I, like that archetype, I look like none of those people, but I felt like, oh no, that is what love was, right? right? That you had someone that is willing to fight for you, mm -hmm. that is willing to actually move mountains to be with you. And like anybody else, then you become a slave to the unavailable. But that's, TV, that's not real. What it was real? Come on, later, come on. But I just, real, I just real. as I have been, I've been in relationships and I have been in deep, deep love, companionship, partnership, and it still didn't work. As I grow, as I was in different spaces, as I was around more people, my career started to take off, as other things in my life started to develop, I realized I maybe needed or wanted something else. But when I entered into the relationship, I, I loved it. But it, three years, it, it was a different situation. I still have so much love, but I think what we should, as a community, learn is that love is not what should keep you into a relationship. It's partnership, do we get along? Are we interested in similar things? And even if we're not interested, do I support you in your interests and you in mine? That's why I'm like, when you meet somebody, show up or at least try to think about what do I want? How can you show up for me? Can, mm -hmm. can I see that you can show up for me in these ways? Mm -hmm. And also, are you willing to grow with me? Because your interests and needs might adjust and mine too. I always ask on a date, um, what's your toxic trait? Like your real toxic trait? Like what's something that is- What's like, yours? I'm a <laughs> terrible texter. I'm a terrible texter. I will Same. forget to text you for days and then come back. How I'm bad is it like? It's, 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 I mean, I, I, uh, it's not good. I don't think that's his toxic trait, but if that's what it is to you, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> I was just gonna say, we also need to start acknowledging that text is a form of communication. So it's not that you are a bad texter, that also means you are a bad communicator. In that regard, and I would agree with that. Go ahead and pull. Get your phone out of here. This might be long as I've been off. See, I don't like this. I know. It's a it wild card. Hard. Okay, so this one, this round, these are all wild cards. Oh, God. You can only pick one person, and you're gonna ask them any question that you wanna ask. Oh my God, I don't know. I'm let somebody else go first, and then I'll think of my question. <laughs> <laughs> somebody pull up.
What's your type? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, my type. I reflect about this often because I, um, I think I was conditioned to be drawn to masculinity and that somehow masculinity equaled power or safety. And I find that like those things are like, I can give that as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like my type now is definitely um, the opposite of that. Um, so I like pretty niggas. <laughs> I do. Um, oh my God. Uh, but, <laughs> but I feel like I'm not, um, I'm not beholden onto a masculinity that is like destructive and like toxic. That actually doesn't feel gratifying or compelling. Someone that's like soft and free, that is the most powerful and sexiest thing to me. I mean, I'm a film queen, but I give it up. So like, I'm like aggressive top. What is it called? Power top. All right. Yeah. I'm so like, sure. I mean, so I like. What oh, I oh, oh. So, so you do the oh, baby. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that's my type. Yeah. But okay. someone that's like open and like fluid and their like power, their mm -hmm. like and their softness, mm -hmm. I find that to be very sexy. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. All right, now you get to ask somebody a question. Okay, I'm, I'm going right over to you. All right. <laughs> okay, maybe this is too personal, but do you feel that like you're in a place where like you have to disclose when you first meet someone? So two things. One, I typically just do it to get it out the way because I've been doing it for so long. Uh, what I've come to realize is I will always be in a state of disclosure because that's just how my life is set up. It's just easier for me to do it right from the very beginning because no matter how many times I disclose or how many times I tell people or how many articles I've written or how many times publicly I've been on a billboard, I'm always going to meet somebody who doesn't know that I have HIV. And I'm always going to have to disclose again and again and again. And so it's kind of become part of like my normal routine at this point. If you are one of those serophobic people, like I just need to get you out the way anyway. Right. Like, I don't even want to go on date two or three or go even down that path and then find out later. And now I'm crushed or I'm heartbroken or any of that. I'm almost 40 years old at this point. So it's like I'm on 45. OK, like getting closer to 40 just brings a lot of clarity into your life where it's just like that thing, because disclosure used to be the biggest thing to me when I first was diagnosed. Right. Like that was the biggest fear I had and for it to now be the smallest thing I care about is a very beautiful like thing for me that I get to live with right because I really don't care sometimes I forget I have HIV until it's time to take my pill and that's just the reality of it I don't think about it because so many other things go on in my life and I think me being so public about it now because I talk about it so much is so that it frees other people because there are so many who still live in silence about their status and you would think it's only 15 public figures that live publicly with HIV but it's like the numbers are the numbers and baby we know it's got to be more than that right but there's a stigma still attached to it and I feel like as long as I keep saying it out loud and showing that you can live this life and, and take care of yourself and, and be proud of you know who you are despite the circumstances you may live in i feel like it frees so many others it's just become a part of who i am it's like yeah this this is it and i'm hiv positive and that's okay thank you for sharing yeah thank yeah you. oh we gotta ask questions i don't know if i want to get deep or personal but i think i'm gonna just keep it light but this is something i often think about so yeah. if you could talk to anybody who is no longer here from the past like who would you talk to and what type of conversation would you have with that person hmm. i would love to spend the day with nina simone Ooh, i love, I love it. her this i is love why I her to ask this question i love <laughs> her i'm a songwriter so just I, I want to dive inside her brain. Like, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood is like one of my favorite songs of all time. I want to know what she was thinking, what the scenario she was in, the mind state, all of that. And even the mechanics of like transforming, because what songwriting does for me is like transforming all of this pain and all of these things that I'm going through into something so beautiful and so freeing and something that can touch so many people. Mm -hmm. So just knowing like exactly, or maybe it's maybe, she, it's not even a thought for her. It's just right. what pours out of her. But either way, I want to know. It's wow. beautiful. Yeah. It. You already asked the question, correct? Yeah. So you should just ask the um, question. I guess I always want to know this about people. Um, so, Caitlin, is there anything that 
if you look back over your life, that you would go back, change, no. and redo? I don't know. No, that's right. No, I wouldn't change one thing because that <laughs> one change could completely change where I am today. Yeah. Like even the bad stuff, I would not change because it made me who I am. Like I live and have the opportunity to live an incredible life. The fact that I can be like, I want to do this show, I'm going to do it myself. The fact that I have the resources and the ability to do that, I would not go back to change anything that could possibly make this not possible. Yes. I think life is not about becoming. I think it's about unbecoming mm -hmm. the things that you took on through the journey that don't serve you in the greater picture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not changing a goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I guess my question is for you. Being a performer, and we've known each other for a very long time, and now having the opportunity to be on Broadway, is it everything that you thought it would be? The PC answer is it's been a dream, um, and I am thankful to have dreamed something, worked to get here, and then have had the opportunities to get there. The real answer is no, it's not all that you dream it to be. It's not all happy-go-lucky. It's hard. Just because you book a Broadway show does not mean you will book another Broadway show. Doesn't mean your Broadway show will last. I used to think that making it to Broadway would validate my talent and ability, and it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, that's something that has to come from within. And honestly, the more people who accept the kind of artist you are, where you sit, where you live, the more you accept yourself, the better artist you can be the more the shows that are right for you come into existence, yeah. the more like-minded peers you meet that become your community, your family. But no, it's hard. I don't go outside. It's eight shows a week. Your body's tired. Yeah. Your mind's tired. You're in a building that is old and dusty and has a lot of fucking energy in it every day. Sometimes you just want to go home yeah. and just be by yourself. I think people think it's easier. People think that we just have fun, and it's it's very very difficult. China's called show business, not okay. show yes, fun. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it people, is. Uh, yes, it people is. People conflate it. Yes, it is. So and Mark those that don't, fun. right? Yeah. And those that don't live in it don't understand yeah. it. Yeah. It's hard to communicate. Well, to that point of show business, thank you all for joining <laughs> me here at my show yeah. business. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation. We covered a lot and yeah I'm excited for people to get an insight on who you all are as people. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you yes. Thanks, Thanks for having me. me. Yeah. Yeah, this is a dope conversation. Anytime. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible conversation. Thank you to all our guests for sharing their journeys and insights. These stories remind us of the resilience, beauty, and power within the LGBTQ+ community. To everyone watching, I want to leave you with this. It's okay to have doubts about your future and to feel uncertain about the path ahead. But remember, being who you are is an act of courage. Each of us has faced our own battles and while the journey isn't always easy, there is hope beyond the rainbow. Like I said earlier, somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. Many of us have made it there and you can too. Celebrate how far you've come. No matter where you are on your journey, keep pushing forward because your story matters. You matter. And remember, you are not alone. We're all in this together, supporting each other and making a difference. So take these stories to heart, support each other, speak up for justice and spread love. Join us next time on Between Crossroads as we explore more pivotal issues at the intersection of diverse and sometimes conflicting identities. Stay curious, stay informed and stay engaged. See you at the next Crossroads.